Welcome to the Unconditionally Worthy Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Adia Gooden, a licensed clinical psychologist who believes deeply that you are worthy unconditionally. Hello, and welcome to episode 30 of the Unconditionally Worthy podcast. We have another guest interview for you today, and this one is with a former course member of mine, Donita Cook. She took the Unconditionally Worthy course in the spring of 2021, and we really had a wonderful conversation about Donita's self-worth journey, how connecting to her unconditional self-worth has shifted not only her personal life, her professional life, but also her romantic relationships. And so this is a really engaging and powerful conversation, and I'm sure that you're going to get some inspiration for your own self-worth journey. Let's get into the show. I am so excited to have Donita Cook with me here on the podcast today. She is a former course member. Um, She took my Unconditionally Worthy course in the spring, and I'm just excited to have her to share her own self-worth journey and her experience in the course overall. So Donita is a knowledgeable, driven, goal-oriented, and savvy professional with expertise in operations management and higher education. And she's currently working as an administrator at the University of Chicago Law School. Her passion is helping students accomplish their educational dreams. Before joining the University of Chicago, Donita worked at the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern, City Colleges of Chicago, and Schreyer University, where her main focus was program management and helping students navigate the complex world of financial aid. Didn't we all need some help yeah. with financial <laughs> aid? Whew, I know I did. Um, And she also has extensive experience outsourcing um, as she spent a decade working at Accenture. Donita holds a Bachelor of Science from the University of Arkansas, a Master of Business Administration from Keller Graduate School of Management, and a Master's of Public Administration from Strayer University. Donita grew up in Bellwood, Illinois, which is a West... uh, Western suburb of Chicago, and she always loved traveling downtown because she has a passion for fashion. So thank you so much for being here, Donita. I'm so excited to have this conversation. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Good to see you again, for sure. (laughs) Always good to see you. So, you know, one of the places that I start all of my sort of guest interviews on the podcast is asking people to share a little bit about their own self-worth journey. So I'd love if you could share with us like how you think about your self-worth journey and kind of what have been some of the pivotal moments on it. Yeah, so it's definitely been a journey. I guess, you know, I didn't realize that I was suffering from I don't know, something, right? I I didn't quite have the language or the words for it, but something just wasn't quite right, you know? Um, All through me growing up, I've been like seeking approval um, from friends and family. And so it's always been, you know, if I got good grades or if I was, really good in sports or if I was prettier, yeah. then I just would be more worthy, um, worthy period, worthy of love, mm-hmm. just worthy in general. Um, so, you know, I've, like you said, I've done a lot of things in my career. I've moved a lot of places. I've been promoted and moved to Texas and New Jersey. Um, about seven years ago, though, I moved back to Chicago. And when I moved back, I really wasn't right. Like I Mm. just didn't understand um, mentally something just wasn't right with me. And so Mm. I sought out a therapist and started going to therapy, which was really great for me, um, but still not necessarily knowing the language and what I actually was going through. So I would say about three or four years ago, Um, I kind of set out on a journey of just trying to be the best version of me. Um, Not sure kind of what that looked like, Mm -hmm. but, you know, let's read some books. Let's, uh, you know, listen to some podcasts and figure it out. And I came across um, your TED Talk on Mm -hmm. unconditional 
self-worth. And I was like, oh, here's the language that Mm. I didn't have. You know, everything that you said just kind of resonated with me. Um, So I'm not exactly sure how I found you. I don't know if it was on Facebook or Instagram. I'm really not that big on social media. Like I have it, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's just not my cup of tea. Um, And so you had a master class. Mm -hmm. And I went to the master class and then you offered the course. And I was like, this, I have to do this. This is going to definitely kind of help me on my path to just being the best version of myself. And so, you know, here we are (laughs) today. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that journey. And, uh, you know, I think one of the things that stands out, of course, as I read your bio is how accomplished you are, right? You have multiple degrees, you have multiple certificates, which I didn't even mention in your bio. You worked at prestigious institutions and organizations. And I wonder if you, you know, it sounds like what you're saying is like growing up, you felt like, okay, be prettier, be smarter, be better athletically, that will make you worthy. And I wonder if that continued into sort of your early adulthood as you were pursuing these degrees and, you know, pursuing this high powered career Mm -hmm. and hoping that maybe that would make you feel worthy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have two master degrees, not anything wrong with that. It's just, I felt that I needed that in order Mm. to be more worthy. Oh, this will show people that I am intelligent. Mm. Where that's, I mean, people go to school and are not, they may be book smart, but not common sense smart, you know? And yeah. so that is definitely a reason why it was like, this is, and in the moment while you're doing it, um, it makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. And then once you accomplish whatever that goal is, that you set for yourself, you feel good in the moment. And then you go right back to whatever that feeling is, if it's emptiness or you just don't feel fulfilled. And so that's really, um, you can kind of say that about, especially my education, because I do have certificates that I don't need for the job that I have Mm. now. And I don't know that I necessarily needed them for my previous jobs, Mm -hmm. but I think that's the story that I told myself. Mm -hmm. You need this to show them that you are worthy of this position Mm -hmm. and let them know you hired the right person and let me show you that you hired the right person. I'm going to go and get two more degrees, you know, and and that's kind of how I have kind of moved through my career. Um, until recently, I haven't been in the school in a very long time, which is so funny. I have a girlfriend, um, she graduated from law school maybe four years ago. And so every time we have a conversation, she's like, so when are you going to law school? Like, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that. And she's like, I'm going to keep asking you because I'm sure you're going to get the urge to go back mm-hmm. and get another degree. And in the past that, that might have been something that I seriously considered Mm -hmm. but now I'm comfortable and I don't need to do that you know maybe Mm -hmm. just the class here or there but to like go for a a entire degree or another certificate no (laughs) I've I've reached my limit for Mm -hmm. sure yeah I think there's something to feeling content with who you are, what you know, where you are, that really can quiet the pursuit of more degrees or kind of adding things onto yourself, which doesn't mean that you don't still strive for things or pursue things or want to do well in your career. But I think the energy that drives and motivates it is a little bit different. And there's thoughtfulness around like, Oh, it's, it's less of like, well, could I get a law school degree? Like, Mm -hmm. am I capable of doing that? And do I need to prove to myself and other people that I could be a lawyer if I wanted to versus Mm -hmm. like, okay, like, would this 
enhance my career? Would this increase my paycheck? Would this help me pivot into something that I actually want to do? Would this be interesting, right? The questions around why you're doing something become different when it's no longer in pursuit of self-worth versus when it is in pursuit of self-worth, it's like, oh, I've got to prove to people I can do it and, and it'll look good. And then I can tell everybody I have a JD and everybody, you know, and Mm -hmm. then I think we make much more intentional, thoughtful Mm -hmm. decisions about, you know, especially with grad school, it's like, it's a lot of debt, you know? Um, And so it's like, you know, does this really make sense for my life and my career? Not, will this be the thing that I think finally makes me feel worthy? And as you described, it's like, yeah, it might feel good for a little bit, but eventually you're sort of off to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And that's certainly what I experienced in my own life, right? I pursued and pursued and pursued Mm -hmm. and you know, it's like, I got my PhD and I was like, Oh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) this isn't what I hoped it was going to be right. This didn't make me feel like now I am worthy. Um, and thankfully, you know, by the time I got my PhD, there wasn't much else I could get. Like, I guess I could have found something else to do, but it it felt pretty clear at that point that like, okay, if this isn't going to do it, nothing, nothing's going to do it. No Mm -hmm. degree is going to do it. Yeah. And for me, it's also kind of the voices in my head are quiet as well. Mm. Um, it, I'm comfortable with what I have and not, I don't have to prove, like you said, I don't have to prove myself to anyone, you know, just, just me. And, and it's not going to happen, but <laughs> if I did decide to, to get another degree, it would be because that's something that I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Not because I'm searching for validation because I've done you know this other thing. Yeah. yeah. And that makes a big difference. Makes a huge mm-hmm. difference. I mean, you know, I know you work at the University of Chicago. I was in their counseling center for about four years. And so, you know, the number of students that came in feeling exhausted, overwhelmed, because they were pursuing degrees that they felt they should do right but they didn't really want to but they felt stuck right like it just leads to a lot of frustration and burnout and all of this stuff that we really we don't have to go through but so many of us do in this pursuit of worthiness Mm -hmm. absolutely and a lot of students come to me with that and especially prospective students Mm -hmm. And while, yes, I I want you to absolutely come to the University of Chicago, at the end of the day, you have to make a decision that is best for you. Financially, Mm -hmm. culturally, will this Mm -hmm. be a good fit for you culturally? And then is this really something that you want to do? Is having a law degree what you really want to do and you know your path forward? So I do, I have those conversations, you know, with students all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big one. Mm -hmm. So circling back to your self-worth journey, one of the things that you talked about before taking the course is that you were on this sort of quest and journey to grow, to be the best version of yourself, to learn. And I'd love for you to share just even a little bit more about kind of where were you on your self-worth journey? How are you feeling about yourself? How are you relating to yourself before you took the Unconditionally Worthy course? So I think I was just kind of floating by Mm. and accepting anything Mm. because I didn't have... um, I didn't understand that I was worthy of more. Mm. So whether that be position. So I've been out of work twice in my career. Once I was laid off and the other one, I just quit because I wanted to move back home. And so in both of those instances, I accepted jobs that were the pay scale was way below what I was making prior. Mm -hmm. And it was, I didn't even think to negotiate another salary because Mm -hmm. of my experience. 
in my mind, I was like, well, this is what I'm worth. Mm. And so I'm just going to accept that. Um, And so that's professionally. And then personally, I think I just was accepting anything. Mm. Situationships, if you will. Mm. Like, you know, you want to be in a committed relationship. Why are you going along with this? Mm. Why not say exactly what it is that you want? And again, if that person doesn't want that, okay, then you walk away. Well, you don't because you're thinking this is the best Mm -hmm. that it can be. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. And so prior to your course, this is kind of how I was just moving through life and just like, this is it. I'm just going to accept this because I don't know. I don't believe Mm -hmm. that something better is going to come. And so that's kind of where I was at. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of this, I'll take what I can get. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll take the jobs I can get. I'll take the salary I can get. I'll take the relationships I can get Mm -hmm. because I'm worried that if I push back, if I ask for more, I'll be rejected Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe I'm not worthy of more. And so Mm -hmm. I should just settle for this and be okay with it. Yeah. And then be rejected. That's kind of put me somewhere else that I don't want to be. I'm going to feel even worse about myself. And, and that's just not it. I'm just clearly I'm in a different space because everyone, like I said, everyone has to make a decision that is best for them. And everyone is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think had I, and just in general, spoken up and Mm. spoken for myself that I would have, um, not cause myself so much harm mm. and discomfort mm. um, and, and just realize, you know what, things are going to be okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I totally remember being in that space, especially with relationships, right? Like the settling. And I think it's interesting because often the conversations that my friends and I were having about settling was like, Oh, are you going to settle for someone who like doesn't have a degree or like Mm -hmm. doesn't have the career that you think they should have, whatever, right? Or that Mm -hmm. aligns with yours. But what I I realized eventually is that like the real settling is settling for poor treatment and settling for a lack of commitment when you really want one and settling for you're never available when I want to see you and it's only on your terms or set, right? Like there's all, that's the real settling that Mm -hmm. we do, but it's not often talked about in that way. And it's, it's pain. It feels like, well, at least I have someone, at least Mm -hmm. I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, when you experience that loneliness in a relationship that you've settled for, it's like, well, I, (laughs) <laughs> you start to realize like, I'm not actually sure this is better right? than being single. Exactly. You know, like this loneliness in like, I can't reach you. I don't know if you really like me. I don't, uh, like you're making me feel worse about myself. Like all of that is way worse than being single and waiting to find somebody who is, sees you as worthy and wonderful and wants to love and care for you. And there, and there is just, Beauty in the process of waiting because Mm. you can absolutely get to know yourself and you understand exactly what it is that you want if you do the work, right? So I have been, you know, single for a while. And after the last kind of thing that I was in, it was like, why would you do this? Like, this Mm. doesn't even make any sense, you know? you. Someone, a guy told me if you, um, if you are questioning if your person likes you or not, that means that he does not because Mm -hmm. you, you would know. Mm -hmm. And that just resonated with me. And it was like, okay, (laughs) like Mm -hmm. that's simple enough. I shouldn't have to wonder like, oh, is he going to call me and ask me, you know, to go out on a date today? Like I should know that. Mm -hmm. And it's just. Now it's so clear where yeah. before I just, it just wasn't clear to me because again, I didn't think that I was worthy of that. And so I'm just going to accept kind of whatever comes along. Right. Right. And I think, 
when we feel good and, and comfortable with ourselves and we're no longer searching for someone to fill a void, it is so much easier to see things clearly in relationships and in job situations because it's not clouded by, well, maybe if I do something differently, maybe if I, if I do this and if I wear that and if I do that, then they'll come, right? Like, Yes. Like, okay, how do I, how do I, you know, like get, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh, right? Like you can't really see, like, why do you even have to do all of that? Right. Like you shouldn't have to do all of that to get someone's love and attention and affection. Mm -hmm. But when you're more settled and calm and like, you know, like I love a partnership and I'm also happy with myself and I have good friends and I have a great life and that would be a bonus. So I'm not like desperate. Then you can be like, yeah, like I'm not feeling the fact that you call me once every two weeks, like when you feel like, like, that's just, mm, don't thank you. Right? right. And it's not like, oh my gosh, I, there's something wrong with me that they're not calling so often. Right. And, and you just, it's calmer so you can mm-hmm. see things and make, you know, good decisions about whether or not this is something you want to engage with. Yeah. And that's those, that's the voices and those voices keep you confused mm. and keep you kind of stuck, um, in where you are. And, and when you do the work and I, please believe me, I still have a lot more to do. Um, it does, it gets quieter mm-hmm. and then you can hear the most important voice, which is yours. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of trust that. And that's been a journey for me as well, just kind of mm-hmm. trusting myself and my decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, that has definitely been yeah. a struggle. <laughs> and we're getting better at that for sure. It's an ongoing process. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd love to know if there are parts of you know what you learned in the unconditionally worthy course that sort of relate to this, that relate to this journey of getting out of the mode of settling and taking what you can get. And, you know, I'd love for you to just share that. I think one, having um, forgiveness mm. for yourself um, and not holding kind of previous mistakes um, kind of against you. Um, that is something that I used to do a lot of like, you're stupid because you did this or, you know, whatever it was. And I think we make the best decisions we can in the moment. And then when you have additional information, Mm -hmm. you can make a better decision. And that's okay if, you know, whatever the decision was, if it wasn't the right decision, that's all right. You did what was best for you at that time. And when you grow, and learn and experience other things, then if that situation comes back, you know that you can make a better decision. Yeah. Um, so that is something I learned, forgiveness, um, definitely self-compassion. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, you know, it's so funny, you know, in our um, kind of follow-up during the course, we kind of talked about you know, how we offer compassion to everyone else Mm -hmm. but ourselves. And it's like, why wouldn't we offer that to ourselves? It's so easy to say this person, you know, is struggling. I want to help them Mm -hmm. Um, where we should be saying, okay, you're struggling to ourselves and and let's help us (laughs) kind of get out of the place that, you know, we're at. So definitely, you know, those two things. And then lastly, um, kind of um, just accepting of what's happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of times I would be like, oh, you know, if we could go back and change this, Mm -hmm. this we would still be in a relationship or Mm -hmm. this would be better. And and it's not whatever happened, happened. And that's just kind of what it is. And that's okay that it happened and we should accept it, acknowledge it. And then, you know, just kind of go from there. Yeah. Yeah. So those are, 
you know, um, there are sort of the courses broken up into modules. So there's a self-compassion module, there's a self-forgiveness module, there's a self-acceptance module. And I love that you said those things were big because I think some of these things are things that people are often like, if I forgive myself, right, then I'm going to just run around and be an awful person, right? I've got to keep punishing myself for this stuff I did or else I'll keep making the mistakes, right? If I'm compassionate with myself, I'm just letting myself off the hook. If I accept what happened, that means I'm saying it was okay, right? Mm -hmm. And I love to hear, like, how did these practices of self-forgiveness and acceptance and self-compassion, how did they free you up? to live life, you know, more on your terms. Yeah. So it it's more of, uh, and I'm, I'm still kind of working through them all, but it's now I'm not stuck. Mm. Cause when you don't forgive yourself, you're stuck and you're trying to figure out how to move forward mm-hmm. and still blaming yourself for something you did, something you said where that's okay. But if you forgive yourself, then you can move forward and again, kind of make better decisions um, and experience better things. Mm-hmm. So it just all those things, if you don't offer yourself that, you're just stuck. Yeah, I think that's I, so- I'm Go sorry. Ahead. I just wanted to say and I wanted to move forward because I, mm-hmm. I know where I was mm-hmm. and I wasn't happy there. Yeah. And I wanted to be happy and I was looking for external sources to make me happy, not yeah. realizing that it's in me. I have to start with me first. So Yeah. I think that's so powerful, right? I think so many people feel stuck and they're not sure why. Mm-hmm. Right? They they're there's things that are happening in their mind, the way they treat themselves that are keeping them stuck, but they don't know that they have the power to change those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other thing that came up when you were talking about self-forgiveness in particular is, you know, if you don't forgive yourself, you're never going to allow yourself to have the good things that you want. Mm -hmm. Right. And you sort of talked about like taking what you can get. And it's like, if you feel that you deserve to be punished and that you are undeserving because you have made mistakes and you are holding all of that over your head, a good thing comes and you say, well, I I don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. I'm not worthy of that. I'm not good enough for that. Why should I get that? Mm -hmm. Or you get it. And then you're like, something's going to go wrong. I don't deserve it. Oh my gosh. Right. And so it really robs us of being able to say, you know what? Yeah. I made mistakes and I'm human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did mess that up and I learned from it and I grew from it and I'm not going to make that same mistake again, as long as I can help it. And if I do, I'm going to clean it up. Right. It just gives us so much more grace and room to live fully instead of living in this, like, I'm a bad person. I don't deserve anything. And then feeling like, why am I like, why does my life feel like it sucks? And it's like, Mm -hmm. well, you know, you're not treating yourself very well and you're not allowing good things to come to you. And you just said something about grace. And I think about that all the time that we don't offer ourselves grace, but we will for other people. And for the longest time, I didn't understand that. Like, well, like, I don't know. We all have, you have to love yourself first Mm -hmm. in order for someone else to love you. And so we offer compassion and grace to others, but we just don't do that yeah. for ourselves. <laughs> Sometimes right. that's the hardest thing to do. So. Yeah, right. And and the thing is, we get why we offer it to other people, right? It's like, if you're right. like, well, why wouldn't you treat your best friend that way? It's like, well, because that would be mean and it would be rude and it would make them feel worse. And it's like, yeah, exactly. What's the difference? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what's the difference mm-hmm. between you and your best friend? And so that, you know, why I focus so much on self-compassion because it's such a powerful shift. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people get it theoretically, but the actual practicing of it takes mm-hmm. a different sort of level of commitment um, mm-hmm. and engagement to actually start developing a relationship with yourself where you are kind and you are encouraging and you are supportive and you are forgiving Um, But I think things really change, right? When we're able to do those things for ourselves. 
Mm-hmm. They do. And you see things differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the most important part there, just being able to see it differently and mm-hmm. then you feel different. Mm-hmm. Because now, I don't know if concrete is right, but it's like, oh, like a light bulb goes off. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> will, you say, will you say more about that? Like, I don't know if you have an example of seeing something differently or like how things shifted for you when you started to forgive and practice self-compassion. I just, hmm, I'm not sure if I have an example. Um, it's so hard for me to think of an example because I don't know if I have an example. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I don't know. I mean, you know, I might when come I, back to one. It's okay. I mean, when I think about self-compassion in my own life, I think, you know, the narrative changes, the story changes, right? It goes from how could you be so stupid? You're such an idiot. No one will love you now. I can't believe you did that. Like, you're just like life, sort of like life's over, right? I've had mm-hmm. those moments talked about them on the podcast where it's like, you know, I really was like, okay, well, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I wasn't going to kill myself, but I was sort of like, that's it. Like give up on all your hopes and dreams. Like none of that's going to happen. Right. And it takes the story from that to, Oh, baby girl. Oh man. That was so painful. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry you had to go through that. You were in a space where you were not able to protect yourself in the way that you needed to. And that was horrible. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You're still here. Mm -hmm. You're okay. I'm still going to be here with you. I am not giving up on you. I'm still here with you. And and you know what? I I think we're going to be okay. I think think we still can have a life. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. And so that is like, this is a powerful change Mm -hmm. in story and in relating to an experience that was, you know, incredibly painful or shameful. Yeah. And you're right. The narrative does change in how you react to things. I was telling you earlier about, you know, how I was just triggered um, about something that I felt like should not have triggered me, Mm. but did. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I thought about it and when I went and apologized to the person for just kind of overreacting, I did have that conversation with myself. Like, Mm -hmm. it's okay. This is how you used to act in the past to protect yourself Mm -hmm. or what you Mm -hmm. thought you were doing was protecting yourself. Uh, But really you were doing more harm than protecting. And so you know, after that incident and I went to that person and apologized, I feel better about it. Now, will I be triggered by, you know, that again? Maybe, mm-hmm. um, but hopefully I will react differently. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't, you know, compromise who I am as a person. And I feel like my overreaction, you know, was out of character for the person I am now, mm-hmm. but was very much in character of the person I was four or five years ago. Yeah. And, you know, I think about like often when we get triggered, I think about like our little ones, our younger ones, just like taking over our bodies, right? Like, and they are in control and we're like, what happened? You know? And I think what's really significant about that story is that we're not going to be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're, you know, most of us are never going to get to the place of like a Buddhist monk where you're just like, uh, you know, like totally even never reactive. Like most of us are not going to get there, right? But what we can do is have the courage to apologize, Mm -hmm. to forgive ourselves, Mm -hmm. to clean it up and to work to do better the next time. Mm -hmm. And I think the misconception that so many people have is that if if you forgive yourself and you're compassionate with yourself and you accept yourself, you're not going to do that cleanup work. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that if you're drowning in shame, 
if you're beating yourself up, if you feel totally worthless after a mistake, you're not going to clean it up. Mm -hmm. You're either going to go to the person and say, I'm the worst human being ever. And I hate myself. And I'm so horrible to the point where they then feel like they have to take care of you. Mm -hmm. And most of us have had that experience with someone else. Mm -hmm. We're like, okay, now I'm taking care of you. Right. Or we just hide because we cannot face it. It is too painful to face. But when we're able to be there for ourselves, like you were, when we're able to say, okay, that wasn't great. That, that, Mm -hmm. that was not how I'd like to respond Mm -hmm. to a situation like that. And this alerts me that I have some work to do, some healing to do around something that I thought was healed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now let's do the courageous thing of like cleaning it up and apologizing and not apologizing manipulatively, like right. you have to be my friend, you know, but like saying, Hey, I apologize. And I respect your choice and your decision. It's yeah. so powerful. And, you know, for me, I'm imagining like, what if everybody operated like that? Right. Right. Like mm-hmm. it would be incredible. Like our world would be a different world. <laughs> right. If everybody was like, okay, I'm going to clean it up. I'm not the worst human being ever. I'm just going to clean it up. And I'm going to come to you. And the cleanup felt good. Like, I can acknowledge that what I did was wrong. And I can sincerely come to you and apologize. Um, but that felt good for me to say, okay, you, you are holding yourself accountable. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of the path that you want to be on. You know, you say you want to be a better version of yourself. This is an example of that. So it felt good, you know, not yeah. <laughs> prior, yeah. but definitely cleaning it up felt, felt good. Yeah. It felt like you're, you're operating in alignment with your values. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, you know, as we sort of round out our conversation, you know, I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about what life has been feeling like post the unconditionally worthy course you sort of talked about feeling like you were floating through life you know you weren't super happy with how things were going and what you were accepting or settling for before the course and I you know now we're oh shoot I don't even know how like four five months I think so like the official wrap of the course so I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about how you describe your life now So now I would say that I am a lot more patient with Mm -hmm. myself, Um, where I definitely was not before. Like I would get frustrated Mm -hmm. and completely shut down. Um, And now I don't do that. Now it's, I take a moment to kind of regroup. And think about what's going on. And sometimes I can move through it. And sometimes I have to say, okay, I'm going to just have to come back. Mm. Um, I think another one, like of the biggest takeaways from the course is just trusting in myself mm. and trusting in my decisions yeah. where before I might make a decision. But then I'll, I'm always in my head, ooh, is that right? Mm. I don't know if that was the right thing to do. Mm. <laughs> like, mm. you sure you want to do that? Yeah. So now I don't do that. The decision is what it is. Now, if I get some information later that may change it, okay, that's okay. But I don't second guess mm-hmm. whatever that is anymore. Um. I just, I think I'm worthy of stuff. Mm. And when things happen that are good, I don't try to fight that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Whereas before it's like, oh no, Mm. that's not meant for me. Mm. Something's going to come along and take that or Mm -hmm. this person is going to you know, change the way they feel about you or what they're saying to you, whatever it is, like, "Mm, this is only for a moment. Mm. And then they're going to get to really know who you are. Mm. 
and turn their back on you. And I don't have that anymore. And if something does happen where I fall out of communication with anyone, it's okay now. Mm. I, it's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't take it personal. Whereas before, I took everything personal. Mm. And that's because I didn't have a clear understanding of just me being worthy. Just because, not because I have to do anything. I have to look a certain way. I have to work at a certain place. I have to dress a certain way. Just because I am. And I think that it's so it's such a relief. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'm at peace. Yeah. I think that's really it there is that I'm at peace. And like I said before, the voices in my head are just kind of quiet, <laughs> you know, so I, I name myself critic because in the course we have a self critic. Um, I named her Manic Mary <laughs> because that's kind of how I would operate. And now when she comes up, I'm like, Mary, sit down. I see that <laughs> completely okay. <laughs> it's all right. It'll be it. all right. I love it. Yeah. And when you were talking, I was thinking the word peace, right? Mm -hmm. Peace with your decisions, peace with yourself, trusting yourself, trusting the good in life, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's so exhausting to question ourselves, to question good things, to feel like something, you know, the other shoe's going to drop it every time. Like even when something good happens, so many people are like, I can't trust it. I've got to keep my eyes out. Something bad's going to happen. And it's just like, oh, how exhausting. But to just feel at peace, right? And it's like, yeah, Manic Mary might pop up every once in a while. You'd be like, girl, chill. I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm good. I got this. We're good. You know, it's so powerful. And I think sometimes it's hard for me to articulate, like, these are going to be the benefits of knowing that you're worthy. But what you just described is it. And it's, it's a little bit abstract, but mm-hmm. it's like when you feel it, mm-hmm. you feel the difference of like operating from this sense of peace, this sense of worthiness, how much more settled you feel and mm-hmm. calm and at ease. And yeah, it doesn't mean everything's going to go perfectly, but right. you trust yourself to respond and be able to handle things. And you're delighted and embracing of good things and you don't get overwhelmed by hard things because you can cope with it and you're not saying, well, see, I deserve this because I'm an awful person. And it just makes such a big difference. It does. And then also you can experience whatever good thing is happening, right? Because oftentimes if a good thing happens and you're worried about the other shoe falling mm-hmm. and you miss out on that good thing. And so now it's like, oh, wonderful that that happened instead of something bad's about to happen yep it's just the way of the world something good happened now something bad's about to happen and you don't have to think that way like it's good it happened because it was supposed to happen and enjoy that moment and also something else speaking about moments I had a very hard time with being in the moment. I was Mm. always thinking about something else, whether it was in conversation with someone Mm. where I wasn't even kind of listening to what they were saying. And now I've slowed down. Sometimes I still kind of drift off, but I'm much better at being in the moment and not worrying about what am I going to say next and just being there and listening to that person. Yeah. And I I think that's so powerful because it allows for genuine connection. Mm -hmm. It's harder to connect when we're in our heads, right? Either thinking about what we're going to say or what do they think of me or what am Mm -hmm. I doing tomorrow? But when we can be present with people, we can connect with them much more genuinely. So this is all wonderful, wonderful to hear. And I'd love to know, so if, if you were talking to someone and they were considering taking this course, right? If they were yeah. thinking, I don't know, maybe I should take it. Maybe this is for me. Maybe it's not like, what would you, what would you say about? I would say course? absolutely take the class mm-hmm. just because it's going to change your outlook mm-hmm. on life. 
It's going to change the way you react to things and situations and also how you interact with people and more importantly, how you interact with yourself. Mm. It's amazing. I'm going to just be honest. It's scary Mm. Uh, because you're used to doing things a certain way for so long Mm. that that becomes comfortable. And sometimes it's scary to kind of step outside of your comfort zone, but this is amazing. And you can definitely immediately see the benefits of it. And then also just about you, you are so kind and giving and you offer things in a way that um, are digestible. Mm. And so you are, you volunteer your time and say that you're going to be, you know, along the way for this ride of change. And you, you know, offered your time every week for us. And then also you're not alone when you take the course, there are going to be other people who are kind of in the same boat as you are. Yeah. And everyone from our, our course was, um, very loving and caring Mm -hmm. and giving and willing to share their experience and listen to others' experiences without judgment. Mm -hmm. And so it was just kind of like, oh, I hear you. I've been there. And this is how I kind of was able to get out of that place or I'm still in that place. Can you offer, you know, any advice or knowledge to kind of help me move forward? So it just was a very open um, and honest um, space. Yeah. Yeah, it was wonderful for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for that uh, endorsement. We had such an amazing group. Uh, It was so wonderful. It was so special. It was the highlight of my week every week when we got together and met. And, you know, I'm honored to have supported you in your self-worth journey. And I so appreciate you coming on the podcast to share, right? Share the transformation that you experienced, share, you know, your insights in what was most helpful. I think it's going to be really powerful for a lot of people to hear. And so I'm grateful for you, Donita. And I'm so glad to hear that it's been a benefit in your life and that life is feeling really good right now. For sure. And thank thank you for having me and allowing me to kind of share my journey and kind of helping me get out of my comfort zone because I definitely would not have done this before. I wouldn't have thought that I was worthy or that my Mm. voice should be heard Mm. and my experiences are important. Um, So thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Okay.